I'm Lucio Simone. I'm the engineering manager for BC Group. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the performance inspection procedure of the LifePak 20 using the SA2010 and CS2000 current source. For the first step of the procedure, we'll be testing the earth resistance. In this case, uh, we have the SA2010, but we could also use the SA2005 or the SA2010S for this testing. The test requirements in the inspection procedure are set for IEC 62353 standards, which require that the resistance uh, be measured at with a minimum of 200 milliamps for the current. Now, the SA2010, uh, the SA2000 series, measures resistance with 10 milliamps of current, so it's not enough to meet the standard. So we do have the CS2000 one amp current source that increases the current used to measure resistance up to one amp. So that's fine to go above the, the uh, standard, but we can't go under. So to connect the CS2000, I have instructions at the top, connect to the safety analyzer receptacle and connect to the chassis cable connector. So I've got the cables plugged into the SA2010. Now I need to change uh, modes to earth resistance. That's where we're going to start. And I have to turn on the test receptacle so we have power going to our CS2000. The inspection procedure requires that we zero out our measurement circuit before we take any readings. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the ultimate biomed tool. Some people call it a paper clip. So I'm going to connect the test clip from the CS2000 to the paper clip, and then I'm going to measure the ground on the uh, power receptacle. So my resistance here is going to be measured by pressing the test button on the uh, CS2000. In this case, I get 0 0.02 ohms. So then I can plug in the LifePak 20, and the procedure requires that we measure the resistance of the power cord. So I can do the same thing here. Now that we've zeroed out our test circuit, we can measure the resistance of the power cord, and this gives me a reading of 0 0.0, let's see if I can get a steady reading here. 0 0.08. So if I subtract my zero offset, that gives me 0 0.06 for a measurement of the power cord. Now the test limit says that we have to have that less than 0.1 ohms. So in this case, we're good. 0 0.06 is less than 0.1. So we're under the limit. And then now we're going to connect the uh, CS2000 cable to the ground lug on the back of the LifePak 20, and we're going to measure resistance uh, in that mode. So now I can uh, push to test here. I get a reading of 0 0.09. Um, if we subtract all the offsets, that gives me a measurement of 0 0.01 for the total measurement in the circuit. And that is underneath the limit of 0.2 that is in the uh, test procedure. So we measured our resistance for less than the 0.2 limit, so we can continue on with the rest of the inspection procedure. At this point, we're done with resistance measurement, so we can disconnect the CS2000, and we can disconnect the alligator clip from the back, and the power cord now needs to plug into the safety analyzer. So I'll plug in the power cord here, and then we have ECG leads for the LifePak 20. I'll plug those in. In this case, I have a three lead set. Uh, I could also have a five lead or whichever uh, that you're using. We just plug these in. And in this case, the uh, safety analyzer is a 2010. There's no ECG. So it really doesn't matter what order I plug these in as long as they're all connected. Then I have the quick combo uh, plugs for defibrillation on the LifePak 20. So I'll plug those also in to the safety analyzer. Again, it really doesn't matter the sequence as long as they're all connected at once. We'll test them all at the same time. 
Now we have all, all of our leads connected. Also, if I had uh, SPO2, I would need to have a modified SPO2 cable that had all of those leads shorted together into one. Then we could connect that to another lead on the safety analyzer. But this LifePak 20 doesn't have that. So we're just going to demonstrate what we do have. In this case, we can change to enclosure leakage. And uh, we also need to test with forward and reverse polarity, which we can change simply here on the um, SA2010. And we can see the status at the bottom. There's an LED that shows us whether it's in forward or reversed. So in order to perform leakage testing, I need to connect the chassis cable to the ground lug on the back of the LifePak 20. So there we connected the chassis cable to the ground lug on the back. And normal condition is uh, forward polarity. And we open the ground and we get a measurement of 99 microamps. And that is underneath the limit. And then we can change to reverse polarity by pressing the polarity button. It shows us we're reversed. And then we can get the measurement with reverse polarity. And that is also under the limit, so we can continue on and take our measurements for the leads. So we completed the enclosure testing. Uh, now we're going to go on to lead isolation testing. We're going to apply uh, line voltage to the test leads and measure the leakage current that would uh, result in that. We can test all the leads at the same time. Uh, it makes the testing a little bit more uh, streamlined. So. Um, We'll go into lead isolation mode and we'll select both uh, forward polarity and reverse polarity. We can also select the load of the AMI load or the IEC load. In this case, we'll pick the IEC load since we're doing the 62353 testing. We press the ISO uh, button, ISO test, that applies the line voltage. We can see the blinking LED here just indicates that we do have high voltage applied to those leads, so we don't want to go and touch those. But we can get our measurement here of 15 microamps, and that's under the limit. If we had any of those that were over the limit, we could start disconnecting them one at a time or individually test each one of the leads uh, to find out uh, which one was the problem. So. That's our lead isolation test. And the next thing we need to measure is the earth leakage. And in this case, we have 97 microamps. That's forward polarity. We also need to test with reverse polarity. And we have 140 or 190 microamps in reverse polarity. And again, we would compare those measurements against the, against the limits, make sure that our device is safe, and we can continue on with testing. One thing we'll notice is that while we're doing earth ground resistance, we can't close the ground because in order to measure the current in the ground path, we have to open that circuit and put our meter in place so we can't close the ground uh, during this measurement mode. Forward polarity, reverse polarity. Both can be tested easily. So when we're testing the uh, earth leakage, we have to have the ground open. But to create a single fault condition, uh, we're asked to open the neutral uh, terminal. So we'll test open neutral, we get our measurement, and we can do reverse polarity, open neutral, and get our measurement there as well. And so we'll compare those measurements to the limit and make sure that the device is safe for use. At that point, we've completed all of the measurements for the performance inspection procedure, and we can sign off that this instrument is safe for use. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or would like further information, please contact us at 800 242 8428 or for international calls, be sure and dial the plus one for the U.S. 314-638-3800. Or you can email us at sales at bcgroupintl.com. For more information about our extensive line of BC Biomedical products and other vendor alliances, browse BC Marketplace located at bcgroupstore.com.